almost 90% of large fish stocks are threatened by overfishing. A recent study suggests that if nothing changes in the way we fish today, we will run out of seafood by 2048. So there were two main forces that were the impetus for me coming up with 3D ocean farming. The first was, you know, my life has been one of ecological redemption. I worked in the Bering Sea, tearing up entire ecosystems with our trawls. It was really the height of industrialized fishing. And then the other one is, I just wanted to figure out how do I spend my life working on the water? And I ended up here in Long Island Sound, and they were opening up fishing grounds for the first time in about 150 years. You know, I started by growing oysters, and I did that for about seven or eight years. And then I was hit by climate change. Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy came in two years in a row, wiping out 90% of my crop. So what I did was move my farm off bottom, started using the entire water column, and growing a whole mix of species in these small areas, really a polyculture of the sea. And it was just a way to both adapt to climate change, but also be part of the solution, right? Because all of our crops restore rather than deplete our oceans. Imagine an underwater garden with hurricane-proof anchors at the edges and then just ropes down below the surface. And from there, we're growing our kelp, our shellfish, and then next to that, we have our mussels in mussel socks, scallops in lantern nets. And then on the sea floor, we have oysters in oyster cages and then clams down in the mud. We just try to figure out how many different species can we grow in a small area of ocean. We do two types of farming. We do food farming, and we do pollution farming. So the food farming goes in pristine waters that's traceable, we test the waters weekly. I mean, our kelp, our shellfish is the most traceable food in the country. You wish your arugulas and kales were treated like our, our shellfish and seaweeds. But then we're also growing in polluted areas. And the goal there is to soak up the heavy metals, pull nitrogen carbon out of the water column and actually rebuild those reef systems. And that can be in urban centers, it could be anywhere. And that doesn't go into the food system. We can actually use that for biofuel. I think there have been two big challenges. One is just convincing fishermen to grow vegetables. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, right? We chase things and we kill things. That's our role, and now suddenly we're like arugula farmers quietly farming the sea. But what I tell the fishermen, like me, is that, yes, we can no longer chase fish. That's, we're going to lose that part of our identity, and that's a really sad thing. But we get to keep this other core, which is we run our own boats, no bosses, we succeed and fail on our own terms, and we still get to capture that pride of helping feed the country. Those core elements of what it is to be a fisherman we're able to keep. So what we want to do in this new climate economy is create jobs that bring meaning, that people are proud uh, to do and to go to work. Like, let's create jobs that people can still write songs about. Uh, after I invented this type of farming, decided to open source it and just hand it over to fishing communities to let them take what I've invented and innovate it, make it better. And then we created Green Wave, which is a nonprofit which supports that process. So we've got a farmer training program, we do policy state to state, and we do R&D, solar powered boats, things like that to stay ahead of the climate curve. And our, our hope, our dream is to have Green Wave reefs. So 25 to 50 farms in an area, a seafood hub and a hatchery in a low income community, and then a ring of entrepreneurs uh, innovating and creating value-added products. And then you take that Green Wave Reef and replicate it every 200 miles, not only in the U.S., but all over the globe. We have requests to start farms in every coastal state in North America and 20 countries around the world. And from here, we're really hoping to weave new principles into the DNA of this industry. What we like to say is this is our chance to do food right. This is our chance to do agriculture right. I mean, we can make sure we protect rather than privatize our seeds. We can make sure that low-income come folks have access and can build their own farms. And we can make sure our farms are actually part of the solution to addressing the climate crisis. So it's a really exciting time because our oceans are a blank slate. This is our chance to really design a food system from the bottom up.